Those out there lit. Go around the corner and see him play his drums in his garage. 
Back in the late 60s and 70s. Back in the late 60s and 70s. This is one of my teachers. You know what I'm saying? Everything I play is starting from him. What is it? My cousin Jimmy is a family, you know what I'm saying? Forget it. He's one of them. I did it! Well, yeah, who's it? That's a good boot back there. The guy back there with his glasses on. In the city of New Orleans, Louisiana, every year at Mardi Gras time, I get to stand on the corner of Napoleon Avenue, break it down. Just the base, just the base. Keep it on. I stand on the corner of Napoleon Avenue, down for tours, and I watch every public black high school in New Orleans play my drum tape. I graduated from St. Louis in 1983. I was the first guy, one of the first guys, well, I wrote the rap, but when the band directors from St. Louis asked me to go on the 50 yard line with a mic in my hand and rap, and with the marching band, St. Louis marching 100. This guy right here, he was my section leader. Uh, believe it or not, when this dude walked in the room, walked up that teacher like this. Speed at a 45 degree angle, for real. When he said, get him up, I got him up. And like, and uh, this motherfucker made me duck walk, like a duck. A hundred yards with a snare drum on, and I went to another high school with a big hand, challenged the guy, and lost. So the word got around, hey, Russell Martin, and got around to him, and him and his fucking friend made me duck walk with a soul. To repay him back, Hey, a quick story, and many of you have heard this before, Russell Baptiste is the Michael Jordan of drums, and I'll tell you why, Michael Jordan was cut from his senior high school basketball team. I was carrying his drum my first year. Russell you know, Baptiste, his cut. first year was carrying my fucking drum. I was cut. And he didn't make the drum section. For real. But he later turned out to be one of the five top drummers in the world. Not in New Orleans. Not in the state. Not in the country. This dude here is one of the best five drummers in the world, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, I want you to hold up. Y'all don't understand what the fuck that means. They got drummers all up on the stage here, and we all admire this guy right here. I want y'all to make as much noise as you can for one of the best drummers in the world. Beyond that, beyond being one of the best drummers in the world, let me tell you something that most of you all, because you don't know him, will not ever know or get to know like I know. Not only is he one of the best drummers in the world, he's one of the best gentlemen in the world. And I think you should make a whole lot of fucking noise for that. Yeah. And with that being said, I'm going to say, I ain't going to break down and cry, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to cry. <laughs> All right. Hey, we got the first guest of the night. And uh, you always going to remember her because no matter where the fuck she is, she got these ears on her head. Come on up. Look, soon as she walked on the stage, the white woman gave her the fucking mic. And she's in the back of the bus. Hey, man. Look. I mean, you know, I had nothing to do with her. Okay. Well, Luke King was a real motherfucking 
president of the world. Because, you know, she was never getting on the mic back in the fallings in the 50s. No. She was never getting on the mic. You know what I'm saying? We did a wonderful thing, baby. And look, I had a dream. I had the same dream that I have. A man straight from the fucking corner of Sesame Street. Another man with fake ass cars selling thick mustache, bullet, being like that. I wear my sunglasses at night. Boy, you got your hair with cool in. That's all to me. Hold up, bitch. With all the lights in there, why you wearing shades? Because I fucking can. All right, y'all. Uh, Tom Selleck Jr., y'all make some noise for Glenn. I believe it or not, Lord.